covering the Universal Orlando Resort for over five years, you are listening to the unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 212 of the unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast. I'm Tracy and with me we have Lee. Hello. Darren. What's up, Internet? And Hunter. Hey, everybody. How is everybody? Good, thank you. Well, I am so excited. This might very well be the most important episode that we ever do and that you all have the pleasure of listening to. So absolutely. enjoy. <laughs> right, this show is a little bit different. Um, this episode's going to be an overview of the parks. Uh, we wanted to record this as a resource for first time visitors, kids, and people who want to know what is new at the resort since the last time they visited. We've actually, it was a request of a listener who um, his family were wanting to go for the first time and said, have you ever done anything like that that they can listen to to get a sort of, in a bubble, what the resort has to offer? And I went, well, I haven't, but it's not a bad idea, actually. So, Well, I'll go ahead and start things off here. The Universal Orlando Resort opened to the public on June 7th, 1990 and consisted of one park, Universal Studios, Florida. 26 years later, the resort consists of two theme parks, Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure, a shopping and entertainment district, City Walk, and five on-site hotels, the Portofino Bay, the Royal Pacific, the Hard Rock, the Cabana Bay Beach Resort, and the brand new Sapphire Falls Hotel. Yes, the resort is continuing to expand, and next year we'll see the opening of the new water theme park, Volcano Bay, and we've already seen permits have surfaced for a sixth mystery on-site hotel Mm. now on top of this universal orlando i've recently purchased uh, a plot of land down by the orange county convention center that consists of 475 acres and the massive rumors speculation that is going on at the moment is that it will be a third park very excited to see what they do with that third park considering they still have a lot of really cool properties to use like nintendo and dreamworks and yeah more potter more Potter. Fantastic Most likely pieces. more Potter. Mm-hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe instead of a Hogwarts Express, you'll fly by Dragon to the third game. <laughs> that will be cool. Or Ford Anglia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so speaking of flying, the first thing you're going to have to deal with is getting to the resort. So from the Orlando International Airport, you can take a taxi or an Uber for a small fee. Universal also has a paid-for service to the resort from the airport for hotel guests called the Superstar Shuttle, which must be booked in advance. Many of the hotels on iDrive and the surrounding area will have regular shuttle buses to those places. And the main way that most people are going to get to the resort, of course, is just by driving a car uh, that they either rented or brought with them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, if you're traveling by car, you've got to enter the resort through one of the main entrances and park in the multi-story parking lot that is made up of two structures, which consist of five and six levels, respectively. And they're split into six different areas, which are awesome. We have Jaws. da da Cat in the Hat. do 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 Spider-Man. It's the Spidey signal. <laughs> King Kong. Kong, Kong. Jurassic Park. <laughs> And E.T. E.T. Phone <laughs> home. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you the music in there is a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a little, well, that actually brings up something interesting. If you forget where you parked, just remember the music of the section that you parked at. They all yes. correspond with where you are. Whoa. Yes. Now, the lot itself is also split into regular and preferred parking. Regular parking is currently $20 and preferred is $30. The benefit of preferred parking is you're closer to the main walkways to City Walk. Now, you've also got the option of valet parking, which starts at $20 for two hours before 6pm and rises to $50 for the red carpet treatment. And if you are staying at any of the on-site hotels, the price of parking is not included. But guests can get to the parks by walking and water taxi if staying at the Portofino, Hard Rock, Royal Pacific, or Sapphire Falls, and on foot or by shuttle bus from Cabana Bay. You will traverse the parking lot using a mix of elevators, escalators, be careful on those escalators, by the way, (laughs) and moving walkways to get you to the obligatory bag check slash metal detectors in the parking lot hub before making your way to City Walk. 
Yes, Universal Orlando City Walk opened in 1999 and has gone through many changes over the years. And it's actually gone through one of its massive, massive changes in the last sort of two years. Yeah. And it's now a mm-hmm. bustling hub of entertainment that we believe absolutely is uh, as much of a destination as the theme Without parks are now. Without a doubt. Mm-hmm. The area contains the Universal Cineplex, which is a 20 screen state of the art cinema. The Hollywood Drive In Mini Golf, which consists of two. Uh, 18 hole mini golf courses that are awesomely themed mm-hmm. uh, and they're split into The Haunting of Ghostly Greens which is based on the sort of old B horror movies and Invaders from the Planet Put which is based on those B sci-fi movies mm-hmm. there is also a live concert venue in the Hard Rock Live there is indeed so of course with all your entertainment you've got to have places to dine so luckily there's many excellent choices of restaurants from the highlight quick service options of the red oven pizza bakery uh bread box for artisan sandwiches uh which i actually tried that out for the first time recently it was really good and the hot dog hall of fame that rounds out your quick service options um to the sit down options which include vivo italian kitchen the Mexican restaurant Atahitos, and the NBC Sports Grill and Brew. Uh, there are also several chain restaurant favorites like the Hard Rock Cafe, Bubba Gump Shrimp Company, and Margaritaville. The burger sushi restaurant Cowfish is a admittedly a little bit of a hit or miss place, but caught at the right time, it can be awesome. And the newest restaurant, which is the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Kitchen. <sighs> <laughs> looks to be a great addition to the lineup. City Walk also includes many grab-and-go options, such as the perennial favorite <laughs> of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast, the Cinnabon. And Starbucks, which also has quick bites on the way to the park. City Walk includes many shopping options, including such stores as fashion clothing at Fossil, quirky items at... I can never remember how to... Pick. Pick. Spell it properly. And your one-stop shop for park merch outside of the parks, of course, the Universal Studios store. I like that store. Yes. There are two things that we must include before we enter the parks that could impact your enjoyment of them. The Attraction Assistance Pass, AAP, is designed to assist guests who, due to their disability, may have difficulty waiting in a regular queue. If an attraction has posted wait of 30 minutes or more, you will receive a return time to come back to the attraction and enter through the alternate queue. If the attraction's posted wait time is less than 30 minutes, you will be directed to enter the attraction through the alternate entrance. The AAP can be used at every attraction and will accommodate the person assigned and up to five others in their group. All admission tickets in the group must be electronically assigned to the AAP when it is obtained from guest relations. Uh, guests can only have one attraction return time listed on the AAP and must use it or cancel it before obtaining another. And it is active for the length of your visit uh, or for annual pass holders up to two weeks. Uh, to obtain the AAP, go to guest services in either Universal Studios Florida or Islands of Adventure. And secondly is Universal's Express Pass. Now, if you're familiar with Disney's Fast Pass system, Express works kind of the same way, but rather than reserving a time to come back, you just walk up to the dedicated Express line, show your ticket, and in you go. So instead of the standby line, you're in what should be a shorter line. The other difference between that and Fast Pass is Express is a paid for upgrade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of options for Express. One option gives you one Express uh, Express Pass entrance per ride, and the second gives you unlimited Express entrance. Both can be one or two park options and can be bought for multiple days. Pricing varies depending on the day. Um, so check universalorlando.com for pricing. There is another option for Express Pass, but we will get to that later. Now, one more thing mm-hmm. to mention before we enter the parks are the lockers. They can be a nightmare. Yes. Uh, day lockers are available to rent at the entrance of both parks, and lockers are also available at most rides and are complimentary except for the water rides. Uh, warning, take a plastic bag because your money... Uh, might get wet in your pocket, and if you leave it in the locker and you're late, then you can't get your stuff out. <laughs> you can. <laughs> um, another warning, actually, you're not allowed to take anything on any of the roller coaster rides. Uh, and just as it is at the entrance of the resort, metal detectors are in place to make sure of this. So please make sure that you put all your belongings in a locker before joining the queue. Absolutely. And can I add really quick before we move on mm-hmm. to the parks here? Uh, Lee has neglected possibly the best venue in City Walk, and that is Fat Tuesdays. Oh, yes. <laughs> I never thought about Fat alcohol. Fat Tuesdays is not yes. to be overlooked. 
One last thing you may consider before hitting the parks is Universal's photo package, My Universal Photos. This can be purchased online before your trip and is available as a one day or a three day option. Now each package includes unlimited digital downloads of your theme park photos, a themed lanyard and card, access to the app to be able to view and share your photos and discounts on photos and photo gifts. The three day package also includes a free 5x7 or 8x10 print in a folder and a free 6x4 print and there's also more. So go to universalorlando.com for more information. Also, Universal's Isles of Adventure, Universal Studios, Florida and CityWalk offer complimentary Wi-Fi using their own Xfinity Wi-Fi. So just search for Xfinity Wi-Fi, that's the letter X followed by Finity. Log in and you can tweet, Facebook and use the official Universal app and my Universal photo app. So that's actually going to bring us to our first park. Universal's Islands of Adventure opened on May 28th, 1999. Didn't even have to read the script. I learned that on the quiz episode. (laughs) (laughs) And was the most state-of-the-art theme park of its time and is made up of eight themed islands. Islands of Adventure sits on the left-hand side of CityWalk, uh, just past Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. We will begin our overview and port of entry. So this is most comparable to Disney's Magic Kingdom's Main Street of the park, and it's an area that... If you want to look around, just like Main Street, there's a lot of additional detail and things that a lot of people skip over. They just kind of view it as, hurry up, we got to get in, we got to get to Harry Potter, you know. My biggest bugbear. Unfortunately. Yeah. So the icon of this area and the park as a whole is actually a replica of the Pharos Lighthouse of Alexandria. Port of Entry contains many shops, including Islands of Adventure Trading Company, which I guess is most comparable to the Emporium. Is that what you could say? Yeah. Yeah. If we're comparing yeah. this all to Disney, yes. Which we're not. Well, you've got to you've got to acknowledge your influences there, you know. <laughs> For all your park merchandise needs and your Islands of Adventure themed Christmas decorations, they can be bought right across the way at the Port of Entry Christmas store. It's a gorgeous mm-hmm. shop, it even is. though it's got wonky-eyed grinches. Yes. That's why I haven't got any <laughs> grinches because the wonky-eyed people what do you have against wonky and Grinches? It's not right. You don't know who he's Maybe your at. heart should grow three sizes next time. <laughs> 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 there are a couple of grab-and-go food options in the excellent Crescent Moon Bakery and Starbucks, as well as the fantastic restaurant Confisco Grill, which serves salads, sandwiches, fajitas, and chicken dishes. The Confisco Grill also has a very popular bar, which is the Backwater Bar, which is right attached to it. So please, uh, especially towards the end of the night when they're kind of slowly urging you to get out of the park so they can close up, spend a little bit of time. Annoy those team members. Walk around. (laughs) Enjoy all the details. Pay attention to the cats. Those are funny. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Definitely check out uh, Port of Entry. I know it's... uh, a very special land to all of us on this mm-hmm. show. So give it a check out. Yeah. Just, Absolutely. That's it. Just remember, just slow your pace. Look up and listen as it's well. Gorgeous. There are loads look of, up. there's loads of gags in there. You know, so much that's missed. It's a wonderful place. Anyway, sorry, I'll get off my soapbox before I get on it any further. Uh, now we're now going to head into the main family friendly land, Zeus Landing. Now this is obviously based on the books of the beloved children's writer, Dr. Zeus. This area includes rides that will suit families with smaller children. The Cat in the Hat is a Disney-style dark ride through, uh, going through the story of the book, and it has a height requirement of 36 inches. And doesn't spin as much as it used to. No. Uh, one Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish is a spinner ride, which is a lot of fun. And you may get wet. You may get very wet. And there is no mm-hmm. height requirement for this one. It's kind of like a mini Dumbo, isn't it? Yes. But with, are we going to compare water? everything to Disney? Sorry. The Carousel Cell does not compare to anything in Disney because there is nothing like it in Disney. There is. Prince Charming's No, there carousel. isn't. No, there isn't. That's a boring, <laughs> ordinary carousel. So the Carousel Cell is a carousel featuring Zeusian characters. There's no height requirement and it's really good fun. I don't care how little, how big you are, it's a lot of fun. And finally, we have High in the Sky Zeus Trolley Train Ride, which is a twin train, a twin track train ride. Is this a Zeusian yes. riddle? <laughs> uh, it's above Zeus Landing, and it follows the stories of the Sylvester McMonkey McBean and the Sneetches, and this ride has a height requirement of 40 inches, and it's awesome. And both tracks tell a different story. They do. Yes. Now, there's one main eatery in Zeus Landing, and that's a quick service, Circus McGurkus, Cafe Stupendous, 
which the Highland Sky Zeus trolley train ride one track goes through it. It does. Uh, now, this place serves fried chicken, spaghetti, pizza. My favorite Dr. Seuss inspired dishes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fried chicken, spaghetti. <laughs> Sounds good to me. The pizza, which doubles up as a frisbee. Uh, cheeseburgers and chicken Caesar salad. And in peak times, you can also get green eggs and ham sandwiches at the Green Eggs and Ham Cafe, which is just across the way. And you can't miss it because it looks like a giant green ham. Yes. Uh, sweet treats can be found at Snooker and Snooky's. What is it? Snooker's, Snooker's, and Snooker's, Snooker's Sweet Candy Cookers. And there are some really good sweets in there. Oh, it was on, written down. Sorry. And you can also find the two signature drinks in the area at Moose Juice Goose Juice. And all things Dr. Zeus, gift-wise, can be found in Cats, Hats and Things Shop, Mulberry Street, and all the books you can read. Yep, and stepping inside the Lost Continent, we see this area is set amongst the ancient myths and legends of Greek gods. So that's where I hang out, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are a Greek god. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, this area is a lot smaller than it used to be, due to a large portion of it being repurposed for the addition of the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Uh, the area includes no rides, but does feature two shows, quote unquote. <laughs> the headliner being Poseidon's Fury, a walkthrough show themed to an ancient battle between Poseidon and Lord Darkanon. The show has some great effects and definitely is worth catching at least once. Uh, I think so. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the second show is the eighth voyage of Sinbad, which is not. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. A theater show containing the story of the aforementioned eighth voyage of Sinbad. <laughs> <laughs> What a great description. Well, that's what it is. <laughs> yes, it is. That is very true. It is, uh, it's a stunt show, it but is. it could be scary for smaller kids, you know, because they have young minds and all, and it contains some loud pyrotechnics. It does. So don't bring your cat. If you manage to get him in, <laughs> it's a very show. It's a very scary show for your feline out. friends. Uh, um, but yeah, the show was recently updated and still kind of fizzles amongst other things in the, in the park, but yeah. I guess... You know, it's something to check out at least once. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and then don't miss, of course, the awesome Mystic Fountain in front of the Sinbad Theater. A great interactive element that will be a hit with kids and adults alike. But careful, you might get wet. <laughs> I love that place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the Lost Continent contains a few places to eat. The highlight being the park's signature restaurant, Mythos. This award-winning restaurant for six, no, seven years in a row, no, six, no, seven. Oh, it's an amazing-looking place inside and out. Uh, serving salad, sandwiches, and a range of fish and meat entrees. Fit for a god. Yes. <laughs> it is reasonably priced and well worth a visit. It and is. I will, say just, I will say just real quick, Mythos, if you haven't been there, has some of my favorite views of the entire mm-hmm. park. Agreed. So even if you're not eating, go ahead and just... Run past the security, go in there, and at least just take a look. Because there's some amazing views in there, and it's really incredibly themed. Yes, it is. Yeah. I don't think they'd even stop you there. That's a Disney thing to do. Ooh. Anyways. Yeah, but look out for the butter. The butter's awesome. Uh, it's, it's yeah. Universal butter. It's my yeah, favorite bit. I mean, you said look out for the butter. It's not going to get thrown at you. No, no, no. It's not the floor for you to <laughs> slip on or anything. No, it's, it's just, just cool. awesome. Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> and then they take butter at you. As you sit at your table, your butter slowly grows larger and larger. It looms. Oh, okay. The standout quick service is the Fire Eaters Grill serving gyros, gyros, however you want to say it. Don't eat, get them, though. Uh, chicken stingers, hot dogs, and salads. Makes me want Sh- a gyro. <laughs> <laughs> Shopping is plentiful in this area, too. You can buy anything from coins and medallions forged and struck in front of your eyes. To numerous collectibles, including small armory full of historic swords and daggers, which I think you pick up outside of the park. Yeah, you won't be able to get back on the plane home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it's a letter opener, I promise. Yeah. Now, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade is the new area that replaced the original Merlinwood area of the Lost Continent. Now, everyone knows who the boy wizard is, but now you can step into the village that sits in the shadow of Hogwarts Castle and enter the castle itself. The Wizarding you World. Harry Potter is like the uh, the the Mickey of Universal. No. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> The Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade contains three rides. The first one, Dragon Challenge, formerly Dueling Dragons, is a twin suspended roller coaster. Now, the coasters used to duel, but unfortunately they do not anymore, but do dish out some some great thrills. Mm -hmm. The height requirement for the coasters is 54 inches. 
the next ride is the more family friendly uh, and is the flight of the hippogriff which was formerly the flying unicorn it's a small family coaster that has no inversions and is centered around hagrid's hut and his pet hippogriff buckbeak uh, the height requirement for that is 36 inches and mind your neck when it stops yes um, <laughs> finally we reach the main attraction and that is Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey and is a ride like no other you will climb aboard an enchanted bench to do battle with a fire breathing dragon Acromantula, the Whomping willow dementors and much more in this state of the art attraction that is an absolute must do absolutely now real quickly you say Acromantula. there's a lot of spiders in this attraction yeah. folks <laughs> There's yeah. more spiders than anything else in this attraction, so <laughs> yeah. keep that in mind if you got some severe arachnophobia. Yeah, the kids hate that bit. Yeah, well, <laughs> we all do. Now, as far as the Forbidden Journey goes, the queue itself is worth a walkthrough, even if you can't or won't do the ride. Agreed. Um, if you want to do just the queue specifically, go to the front and ask a team member if you can do the castle tour, and they will direct you into a separate entrance, and you'll get to take the queue at your own pace and check out extra just check out all the details just for yourself uh, without being pushed along in the queue and you actually get to see a different um uh, portrait gallery at the very beginning which is awesome mm-hmm. yeah it feels more like no, nothing against the one in the main queue but it feels more harry potter-esque yeah. with the staircase and yeah. everything that's in there now the height requirement for big journey is 48 inches but be warned people of a larger stature may not be permitted to ride so please use the test seat out in the front of the attraction to save any embarrassment later yeah uh, you should do that <laughs> Uh, yeah. Another attraction is housed in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and that is the mini show at Ollivander's, where one person will be picked out of a small group to have their wand choose them. Yeah. It is a great show, but can draw large crowds, and parents be warned. If your child gets picked, they do not get to keep the wand that chooses them. <laughs> so just be forearmed, because there may be some upset when you have to go through into the gift shop to buy it. Mm-hmm. Lee, let me, uh, if it's okay, let me just chime in real quick about the, the sitting situation of Forbidden Journey. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it was a big controversy when the attraction first opened up that a lot of people of larger dimensions could not ride. They have since added, I believe, on every bench a seat that does accommodate um, oh, good point. larger individuals. Awesome. So, for mm-hmm. instance, myself, um, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm about, I'm 6'2", 6'3", depending, and I weigh approximately about 260 pounds. And I have no problem getting on that attraction in a standard seat or a regular seat. So it really comes down to your proportions yes. more so than your weight, but... Once mm-hmm. again, check out, if you're worried about it, they do have an accessible test seat out front. Yeah. There's always a child sitting in it because their parents <laughs> just stick them there. Just ask them, just pick them up, throw them out of the way, stick your feline on them who's still terrified from Sinbad, <laughs> and then uh, try out that seat real quick and uh, just make sure you're good. But don't don't freak out about it if you're worried about it. Once again, I, I'm a bigger guy and I have no problem getting on the ride. Awesome. Right, moving on. There is one main eatery in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade and that is the three broomsticks which serves English fare such as fish and chips, yep. shepherd's pie and Cornish pasties as well as three types of butterbeer and many other signature soft and alcoholic drinks. And just look up when you're in there. And around. Up especially. That's all I'll say. And pasties listen. aren't really appropriate for any type of children, no, no, though, are no, they? No, no, no. That's why it's pasties. Now, sweet treats <laughs> from chocolate frogs <laughs> to cauldron cakes can be found at Honey Dukes. Uh, there are many shopping opportunities in Hogsmeade. You can buy your own wand, as we said, in Dervish and Bangs, mm-hmm. as well as lots of other Harry Potter-themed merch. You can purchase all your Hogwarts house-branded stuff at Mr. Filch's Emporium of Confiscated Goods, which is at the exit of Forbidden Journey. Postcards can be bought and sent with an actual Hogsmeade postmark on them from the Owl Post. And, of course, there is much, much more. Uh, One last thing. Don't forget to meet with the Hogwarts Express conductor himself in front of the iconic train. And you can catch performances from the Frog Choir and the Triwizard Spirit Rally throughout the day. Highly recommend those. Yes, they are awesome. The Frog Choir is hit and miss. A lot of people like it and a lot of people don't like it. But... uh, Mm -hmm. One one last thing is you can also catch the Hogwarts Express over to Diagon Alley from the Hogsmeade station. And I'm sure we're going to talk all about that in a minute. Um, so moving on further into Islands of Adventure, the largest land and the one that you see most prominently is Jurassic Park. Um, it does say here that the area is based on the 1990 Michael Crichton book 
which is my favorite book of all time, if anyone awesome. was curious. And it, but not the Steven Spielberg movie. Hmm. And, um, it's kind of an amalgamation of the two, if we're being honest. Yeah. Um, you do see characters like John Hammond and stuff in the ride queue for River Adventure. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it pulls from both equally. There are two main rides in this area. The Jurassic Park River Adventure is a log flume style attraction that goes through Jurassic Park itself, but you are pushed off course when something goes wrong and in the ride plunging down an 85 foot drop and you will get wet. Yes. And that's, that's of course, probably before Harry Potter, the most iconic thing that anybody saw from Islands of Adventure is that drop with the T-Rex. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely check it out. The height requirement for Jurassic Park River Adventure is 42 inches. Next up is Pteranodon Flyers, which is located in Camp Jurassic. Uh, this is a suspended ride above the land. And Pteranodon Flyers is designed for children 36 inches to 56 inches in height. Guests over 56 inches in height must be accompanied by a child meeting the 36 inches height requirement. Children between 36 inches to 56 must be accompanied by a supervising companion. They were testing letting adults ride it without kids recently, but I don't know whether that's ended up becoming a thing. If you want a really good, quick look at Skull Island, Reign of Kong, get up there and see if they'll let you in. We haven't got to that land yet. Ah, we'll talk about it. <laughs> there are two other attractions in Jurassic Park, which are within the Discovery Center which is themed like the big uh, Discovery Center. Center from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> the Discovery Center is full of interactive exhibits. And secondly, the kids' play area, which is Camp Jurassic, which is where Pteranodon Flyers is located. Uh, this is just like a playground area. It's full of cargo nets. It's got slides and water cannons. And the perfect place to let your kids uh, run off a little bit of steam. You can also meet a real live Velociraptor at the Raptor Encounter. Just make sure to take your camera and uh, don't feed the raptors, please. No. <laughs> Not unless your child's been really naughty. Or your cat's been really naughty. <laughs> um, there are a few places to eat in Jurassic Park. There's the Burger Digs, which is located in the upper level of the Discovery Center. And it does exactly what it says on the tin. What, Diggs Burgers? <laughs> it has burgers. <laughs> so they actually, they've got a sandbox in there. And if you're hungry... <laughs> You dig. put all these frozen dishes, it's buried in the sand, you got to dig them up, and then you've got to assemble your burger. And then an archaeologist, or excuse me, a paleontologist comes out and appraises it and gives you the condition. It's a really good time. Go check it out. Um, yeah, so Burger Digs, it's standard theme park food. You've got chicken tenders, you've got salads, you've got hamburgers. Um, it, you know, it's par for course. There is also Thunderfalls Terrace towards the end of the land by the Jurassic Park River Adventure Drop which is a quick service location, but it serves chicken, ribs, wraps, and or burgers. Other options include Beautiful. the... On the inside, by the way. Oh, the it's gorgeous. Terrace is one of the nicest looking restaurants in the park, and so many people just walk right by it. Yes. The floor, oh, is, the floor is always wet because you've always got people coming up the <laughs> ride and going in there. <laughs> and the air conditioning is always on full blast. I swear it's always like 60 degrees in there. But... Uh, <laughs> Darren's absolutely right. It is one of the most beautiful uh, locations in the park. And they actually have that mural from the movie painted in there, correct? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So other options, in case you want to get your drink on like Darren does, you can go to the watering hole. Mm -hmm. You can also get small snacks there. And you can go to Pizza Predatoria for, uh, well, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The best sign in the park, by the way. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Two little raptors fighting over a piece of pizza. pizza. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shopping can be found in Jurassic Outfitters, which is the gift shop at the end of Jurassic Park River Adventure, where you can just buy all sorts of Jurassic Park merchandise, uh, hats and T-shirts and plushes and anything you want dinosaurs, you can get there. Mm -hmm. Also, don't forget to check out the two dinosaur photo opportunities um, towards the exit of the land back near Hogsmeade. You can get a picture with the Spinosaurus. And a little bit further on down from the Discovery Center, you can get a picture with the T-Rex. The newest addition to Islands of Adventure is Skull Island. So Skull Island oh. Reign of Kong <laughs> is an island unto itself. And it's a brand new 3D Jeep ride attraction containing live actors, screens and mind-blowing animatronics. The height requirement here is 36 inches. Now this attraction could be too intense and scary for young children, so parental discretion is advised. You know your kids. 
Yes. You know, mm-hmm. so... There are live actors in the queue, so... Better than dead ones. Yes. Yes. Now, snacks can be acquired in Skull Island at the mess tent, and this includes hot dogs, pretzels, churros, mmm, churros, and drinks. Anyone? Now, Anyone? You, you say hot dogs, <laughs> but really, we're not talking about a hot dog here. No. We're talking about a Kong dog. We're talking about a foot-long pretzel bun hot dog served with a whole vat of cheese and relish. Wow. Is it sweet relish, or is it sour relish? It's a, it's a sweeter relish. Oh, see, I, I'm not a fan of sweet relish. Well, you know what? You don't have to use it. <laughs> you know, you're right. You're right. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Long. Yeah, you can't right. just say hot dog. You, ha- you have to really, when something's that big, you have to talk about it. <laughs> now, Skull Island doesn't have a dedicated store yet, I'm guessing. Uh, but King Kong merch can, pre- can be purchased from many of the stores in the park and on City Walk. There is a small uh, display when you are exiting the attraction that sells exclusively Reign of Kong merch. Okay. So you can actually get a gorilla plush there. You can actually buy dog tags. I bought a t-shirt there when I was there last time and a lanyard. They do have a mm-hmm. specific little stand. It's almost like, and I know I, I, I'm, I'm going to stop using the Disney references, but you remember the old... Um, cart that stood outside of Haunted Mansion before they opened up the gift yes. shop. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. It's like that. Cool. Indeed. And, uh, I don't know, Lee is mad at me for doing the Dead Man's Digest too much or something because I got Toon Lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next area on our tour and it's modeled on the comic strips of yesteryear. Everything's modeled of yesteryear in here. <laughs> yes. Read this list to your children and see if they recognize any of them. You'll find Hagar, Beetle Bailey, Popeye, maybe Popeye, and more in this colorful and very wet island. There are two attractions in Toon Lagoon, and they're both water rides, but well worth checking out if you're not me. The <laughs> first is located to your left when entering from Jurassic Park, and it is Popeye and Bluto's Bill Drat Barges, a water rapid style attraction in which guests sit in 12 person rafts to plummet and plunge through every manner of water trap. Warning. I've been on water rides across the planet. This is easily the best water ride, mm-hmm. just period. Yeah. Definitely give uh, Bluto's Bill Drat Barges a go. You must be 42 inches to ride, and guests between 42 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising adult. Yeah, and everyone uh, will get wet. Everyone. I did go through <laughs> once and not get wet, but we went straight through, did a second ride, and then I got absolutely double wet. Okay. I will say, so you always see the funny little disclaimers. You may get wet, or you will get wet. You will come off drenched on this attraction. I've never come off anything less than just completely soaked to the bone, so <laughs> keep that in mind. And uh, if you don't want to pay to dry off in the dryers outside of the ride, then uh, maybe skip this one. But I do recommend it, especially if it's a hot summer day. Yeah. In Florida, that'll take about 10 minutes to dry off completely. Uh, Next up is Dudley Do-Right's Ripsaw Falls. The water ride is a flume type ride. And once again, you will get wet. You must be at least 44 inches to ride. And guests between 44 and 48 inches must be accompanied, accompanied by a supervising adult. Uh, there are a few eateries in this area, from Blondie's, home of the Dagwood, that serves made-to-order deli subs and sandwiches, including the famous Piled High Dagwood, to Wimpy's for burgers uh, when it's open. On Tuesday. <laughs> and two, yeah, uh, two main counter service options, uh, and Comic Strip Cafe is your sit-down option, a cafeteria-style food court where you have your choice of fried chicken, fish and chips, hot dogs, <laughs> burgers, and even Asian and Italian dishes there. Ooh. I did not know that. Uh, so I gotta go check it out. Uh, don't forget your ice creams at Kathy's. Uh, shopping is plentiful too, from gasoline alley for beach towels, sandals, beach bags, sunglasses, t-shirts, and hats to the Betty Boop store to tune extra to your favorite cartoon characters, uh, toys, apparel, DVDs, gifts, and souvenirs. And don't forget, uh, the character factory where you can create and costume your own plush animals. I don't even know where that Uh, is. Yeah, I don't know either. (laughs) Is that even still there? It's on the website. Okay. Well, <laughs> I think that might be the Secret Life of Pet store now. Ah, uh, possibly. If I'm not mistaken. But uh, Toon, Toon Lagoon is also a great place to let your kids run off steam and cool down as there are many uh, water features for your little ones to enjoy and some great photo ops are available in the comic book speech bubbles. I Absolutely. shouldn't have eaten the mushroom pizza. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Rip right. <laughs> yeah. We now enter the final land of Islands of Adventure, and we step into the pages of Stan Lee's Marvel comic books in Marvel Superhero Island. The Fantastic Four, Captain America, the Hulk, Spider-Man, and many more of your favorite Marvel heroes and villains can be found here. 
There are four attractions in this area. The first ride you will hear entering from Toon Lagoon is The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man. And when it opened with the park, it was the first of its kind motion-based 3D attraction, which has been recently upgraded to 4K. Now, Spider-Man is still seen by many as the greatest attraction in the world. Not me, Mm -hmm. personally, but... I love Mm. it. It's pretty good. I do like it. Yes. Hunter's been very quiet. Hunter, you love it. Yeah, top three. (laughs) (laughs) It's an absolute must-see. Now, you must be at least 40 inches to ride this ride, and guests between 40 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising adult. The next ride we find is Doctor Doom's Fearfall, which is a 200-foot drop tower that not only sends you falling back to Earth faster than gravity, but launches you 185 feet in the air at breakneck speed, and you must be at least 52 inches to ride that ride. Our penultimate ride in the park is the Stormforce Axtelatron, which is a teacup-style ride hosted by X-Men Storm. It has no height requirement, but children under 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion. And finally, we meet the big green guy himself as we come to the recently renewed Incredible Hulk coaster, an awesome coaster that launches guests out of a tunnel at 67 miles an hour and features seven inversions, including a Cobra roll and a Zero-G roll, and now includes on-ride audio created by Patrick Stumper Fallout Boy. If you are a coaster fan, it is one not to be missed. And the height requirement for that is 54 inches. Now, Marvel Superhero Island has two restaurants... Cafe 4 has pizza, spaghetti meat, spaghetti and meatballs, fettuccine, meatball subs and chicken Caesar salads. And Captain America Diner has an all-American menu of cheeseburgers, chicken sandwiches, chicken fingers and crispy chicken sauce. So chicken then, basically. Yes. Both okay. are quick service locations. Your Marvel shopping is in abundance here too. The Spider-Man shop has your, is your one-stop place for all your webhead merch. The Marvel Alterniverse is where you'll find character t-shirts, sweatshirts, toys, collectibles, mugs, souvenirs. And you can also get your photo taken with the amazing, uh, and you said the amazing adventures of Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man himself. <laughs> Official Marvel comics, books, graphic novels, posters, and collectible busts and figurines can be bought at the comic book shop. Uh, And one final thing not to miss is the regularly scheduled Marvel Heroes Parade. Now, Spider-Man, Captain America, Storm, Rogue, Cyclops and Wolverine will come out on ATVs. They are like those quad things to meet and greet with guests. But keep your eye out as you may also see Doctor Doom and the Green Goblin roaming this area. Cool. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's Islands of Adventure. Awesome. So we're going to cross back into CityWalk, and we are going to come to the entrance of Universal Orlando Resort's original park, which of course is Universal Studios Florida. If you want to avoid the crowds at the main turnstiles, you can try the side entrance near the Blue Man Group, but unfortunately it's not always open. If you're approaching that from Islands of Adventure, you can go left past the Hard Rock Cafe, and then go past Rip Ride Rocket, and you'll come right to the Blue Man Group building. So that's a little bit of a shortcut for you. Mm-hmm. That's a nice little So uh, as you cross the bridge, if you do, if you're just entering Universal Studios Florida, not from Islands of Adventure, if you want to um, cross over the bridge, you can get a picture in front of the iconic Universal Globe. On entering the park, you're going to arrive into Entrance Plaza, and you will find guest services to your right. And then we will move on into Production Central. Here you will find four attractions. There's Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, which is a non-inverting roller coaster that has many one-of-a-kind twists and a vertical lifting hill. The most unique element of this coaster is the ability for you to pick music tracks um, that you will listen to while you ride on the ride from various genres. Asta. (laughs) Asta. (laughs) Someone had to say it. (laughs) Once you sit down, you will have a touchscreen on your lap bar that you can choose from a number of tracks, but be warned you only have a short amount of time to choose. Um, It's a little bit more than I can explain here, but there is also a secret track listing that you can check out. Yes. Just Google it. It'll come up. Yeah. Yep. And there's uh, probably a couple of extra hundred choices of songs that you can check out there. So check that out if it's not your first time going. Good point. You do have to be at least 51 inches to ride, but this coaster also has a maximum height restriction. So if you are over 79 inches, you won't be able to ride. Sorry, Craig <laughs> Lucas. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll mess up the balance and fall out the back like I'm always afraid I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. You're going to out the back, yeah. yeah. If you get the chance to, ride it by night because it's a different ride by yeah, night totally. as well. No, good point. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, the best thing about Rip Ride Rocket, I think we can all agree on this, is when it's... Uh, 
moving in the background during one of the concert series. Yeah. A really yeah. cool effect. Yeah. yeah, it does. The light package is really good. It adds a lot of dynamics to the park mm-hmm. on a night. Definitely. And even from the interstate, you can see it running in the middle of the night. It's really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So next up is Shrek 4D. This is an in-theater 4D attraction that takes place in between the stories of the original Shrek and Shrek 2. And that's about it's it. A- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Uh, Despicable Me Minion Mayhem is next on our tour. This is a theater-style attraction in which you board moving seats to join Gru, his daughters, and the mischievous minions on a heartwarming and hilarious 3D ride. Guests must be at least 40 inches to ride, and non-moving seats are available. Mm -hmm. This is the busiest attraction at Universal Studios Florida, so if you want to check it out, if you've got early hotel admission, check it out first thing in the morning or later in the evening if you don't want to wait that long. Or use your express pass. Yeah. Exactly. So the very last attraction that we come to is Transformers the Ride 3D. This attraction is very similar to The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man and is a replica of the one that is found in Universal Studios Hollywood and Singapore. A motion-based 3D attraction in which you join Optimus Prime as you protect the AllSpark from Megatron and the other Decepticons. There's a really cool elevator scene in this that you don't even notice. Keep an eye out. It's not your first time riding. See if you can figure out what that elevator scene is. Yes, it is. It is very cool. When you figure it out, it's awesome because you're like, ah, that's where it is. So it's a two-floor attraction. Um, Very, very cool how they managed to fit such a a big attraction into such a small amount of space. The only eatery in Production Central is the Monsters Cafe, which is a quick service location that serves rotisserie chicken, pizza, pasta, eyeballs, salads, (laughs) ribs, lasagna, cheeseburger, and hot dogs, and features themed dining areas, such as Dracula's Castle, the Swamp, and a Flying Saucer. (laughs) Eyeballs? Yeah, you can season your other dishes with them. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Shopping is in abundance at Production Central. For all your minion stuff, head over to Super Silly Stuff. The Supply Vault has all your Transformers merchandise. You can get Shrek gear at Shrek's Ye Old Souvenir Shop. And then for everything in one place, the Universal Studios store has it all. I actually realized I left out the meet and greets as well. Can you remember them to run through them quickly? The donkey's photo finish, isn't it? Where you meet interactive donkey and... And Shrek. Yeah. And sometimes Princess Fiona. Mm-hmm. Um, minions sometimes come out. The Transformers the was more of what I was thinking. Yeah, there's Transformers, because you've got Megatron. Optimus um, Prime Optimus and Bumblebee. Prime Bumblebee. And Bumblebee. Yeah, they are awesome. They're not misses. Okay. Uh, right, so New York next, uh, which you get to by moving clockwise. So in this area, uh, we only have one ride here. Uh as Twister ride it out, closed in October 2015 to be re- replaced by Jimmy Fallon Race Through New York, which opens in 2017. So the one ride here is Revenge of the Mummy, which is awesome. Now it's an indoor dark ride, roller coaster themed after the Brendan Fraser series of the Mummy films. Now you must be 48 inches to ride it, and it could be a bit too intense for younger children as it contains darkness, insects, fire, and loud mu- music. Loud music. <laughs> Hang on, I'm still on <laughs> Ride Rocket here. Loud noises. Yes. It also mm-hmm. goes backwards at one point. Yes, and soul stealing. That's where Jade's went. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you know your children. And it's Yeah, and it is it's a good coaster. It, it really would have been is. a better coaster if I would have gotten my cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> now the only other attraction in New York is the Blues Brothers show, which takes place on Delancey Street and is amazing. Yes. And I defy anybody to even walk past that and not nod the head or tap the feet. Totally. It's so much fun. Um, Now, it's a musical showcase of live blues presented by Jake and Elwood Blues. And stay afterwards to meet the guys themselves. And they have their car. Yes. Which is really cool. Now, if you want to dine in New York, you can head for Louis Italian Restaurant, which is a quick service restaurant serving pizza, spaghetti and salads. Or there's Finnegan's Bar and Grill, which is a table service Irish restaurant Irish even, restaurant serving fish and chips, corned beef and cabbage, Guinness beef stew and sandwiches. I'd made like corned beef and cabbage sounds nasty, but... Best, I, I think personally, best restaurant in Universal Studios. Okay. Well, corned beef here and corned beef there are two different things. Ah, I did not know that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the shopping can be found in New York at Sahara Traders, which is the mummy exit for the mummy ride, which has themed apparel of toys, novelty hats, Egyptian statues, jewellery and other gifts. And the Christmas shop, which is beautiful. It is awesome. A thing of beauty. 
Uh, it's opposite Transformers for all your Universal Orlando Christmas decorations. And I want mm. them all. I really do. <laughs> now, there's also an arcade here if you need to get out of the rain for a bit or cool down or just shut your bloody kids up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moving out of New York, we move into San Francisco. There are currently no attractions in this area, as the attraction that was there, Disaster, a motion <laughs> picture starring you, closed in September 2015. And also, uh, the other one, actually there was two, wasn't it? Yeah, Beetlejuice's Graveyard Mashup also closed in January 2016. Uh, and they closed to make way for the newest attraction, which will be open in 2018, and that will be Fast and Furious Supercharged. Uh, <laughs> there are two eateries in San Francisco, though. You have Lombard's Seafood Grill, which is Universal Universal Studios Florida's signature sit-down full-service restaurant and serves seafood, chowder, pastas, sandwiches, salads, and more. And then your quick service option can be found at Richter's Burger Company for burgers, including the ground-shaking double cheeseburgers that you can top at the fixings bar, plus chicken sandwiches, grilled chicken salads, and milkshakes. Shopping. It'll really send shockwaves through your day. Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> shopping can only be found. Uh, some, shopping can only be found in San Francisco at the Candy Factory for fresh-made fudge candy, apples, gourmet cookies, and bulk candies in every color and flavor. So only good for eating and not wearing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you missed the perhaps the the biggest and most colossal thing you can do in the San Francisco area, and that's get your picture taken with Bruce the Shark. Yes, oh. I'm just miming it to him. Sorry, Thomas. Sorry, Bruce as well. <laughs> and Shea Alcatraz, which is a oh, yes. nice little nice little sit-down uh, bar and sometimes restaurant, right? They serve food there from time to time. I'm not sure. I think they do like small appetizer type things, but um, yeah, you can get some of the signature cocktails from the park there as well. Um, and yeah, that that Bruce meet and greet is is yes. pretty great. Good point. Indeed. Um, well, the most recent land added, added to Universal Studios Florida is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Diagon Alley, which most people walk right by. <laughs> <laughs> the main attraction in Diagon Alley is Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. There is a cutting edge 3D motion based roller coaster through the vault of Gringotts Bank. I'm just gonna repronounce it different every time uh, i guess must be at least 42 inches uh to ride escape from gringotts there, <laughs> there may only be one ride here but there are a lot of other things to see that is for sure uh, it's visually amazing yes uh, make sure you look out for creature in the london waterfront at grim old place and don't forget to say hi to the night bus conductor and the shrunken head at the actual night bus if you can find it people keep saying it's there i don't see it i don't know <laughs> But uh, once inside Dal- Diagon Alley, which you will now be guided to by helpful uh, muggles in London who somehow know where they are. <laughs> the wizards, they're this way. Come on, <laughs> come look at the wizards. <laughs> they do point you that way. Um, be sure to catch WADA, the Wizarding Academy of Dramatic Arts on Carket Market stage as they perform puppet shows from the book of uh, the Tales of Beetle the Bard. Throughout the day, you can see the tale of the three brothers or the fountain of fair fortune performed here. And in between these performances, you can also see Celestina Warbeck and her backing group, the Banshees, perform some of their famous hits, including You Stole My Cauldron, But You Can't Have My Art. The original wand shop is in Diagon Alley, Ollivanders. It's a short interactive experience, uh, the same as as that which can be uh, found in Hogsmeade, in which the wand chooses the wizard. Again, for a small fee. Yes, <laughs> but they have female uh, wand keepers, don't they? That's ooh. right, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Um, and food and drink options are in abundance here. For a proper meal, the Leaky Cauldron is your best bet for a typically English meal, such as cottage pie, fish and chips, bangers and mash, scotch eggs and stew, as well as many of the Wizarding World's signature beverages. I can vouch for and a for couple a sweeter, of those. Oh, what? I can vouch for a couple of those signature beverages. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, for a sweeter treat, you can, you must stop by Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor for wizarding ice cream flavors such as butterbeer, apple crumble, chocolate chili, salted caramel, uh, salted caramel blondie, excuse me, and much more. Be sure to stop by the Hopping Pot for butterbeer, pumpkin juice, wizard's brew, dragon scale, and many more wizarding beverages. Finally, Eternal's Elixirs of Refreshment. Uh, grab a bottle of Gilly Water for $4 and then choose your <laughs> potion flavoring from Fire Protection Potion, Babbling Beverage, Drought of Peace... Draft, draft a piece, I think that should be, yes. right? Yes. Uh, yes, an elixir to induce euphoria. Uh, shopping here is more prevalent than anywhere else in the park. The highlights include Borgian and Burks and Nocturne Alley, 
for all your Death Eater and Dark Magic needs. Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome best, shop. Best shop. So cool. Yeah. Uh, Weasley's Wh- Wizarding Wheezes is Fred and George's famous joke shop. The magical menagerie stocks <laughs> all your f- magical creatures. It's uh, quality that. Quidditch yeah. supplies has all your... Oh, God. Quality Quidditch supplies has all your Chudley cannon and Quidditch needs. <laughs> Aha. Uh-huh. You can even go and see the goblin at the money exchange to exchange your muggle money into nuts, sickles, and galleons. Not accepted One. in park. I don't know whether that's true or not. <laughs> no, I don't think they are. <laughs> It's like the crusty cash, yeah. Uh, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is the ability to buy interactive wands that can be used to perform real magic inside Diagon Alley and Hogsmeade. Look out for the markers on the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last thing we need to mention about this area uh, can be found to the left of Diagon Alley's entrance, and that is King's Cross Station. You will go through the barrier to get onto platform nine and three quarters to catch the Hogwarts Express to Hogsmeade, but you must have a park-to-park ticket to ride the Hogwarts Express. Basically, make sure your credit card's empty when you're going. Yes. <laughs> yes. Can I just point out as well, on the waterfront, there is also a red telephone box. Yeah, oh, yes. You must go in and make the call. Magic. Magic. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's all I say. So moving out of the London waterfront, next up we have the World Expo. Now here you will find two attractions. The first one we come to is Fear Factor Live. Uh, this is, it's a seasonal attraction. It'll be closed if you visit during the Halloween Horror Nights and other times of the year. So it is a stage show based on the TV show of the same name in which park guests can join in to perform gravi- gravity-defying stunts and other challenges. Now, if you want to participate, you can, but you need to go to the front of the stadium entrance an hour before each show to sign up. Next up, and probably the main attraction in World Expo, is Men in Black Alien Attack. Uh, This is an interactive dark ride based upon the 90s film starring Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. You will patrol the streets of New York, picking off aliens with your guns, racking up points, which makes this a hugely re-rideable attraction, and that is why I've ridden it about 50 times. Mm -hmm. Uh, You must be at least 42 inches to ride, and riders between 42 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion. There are only snack cart options for food in this area, so... Churros and drinks. Corn and dogs. Corn dogs, that type of thing. Uh, the only shopping in World Expo can be found at MIB Gear, which carries a complete range of Men in Black gadgets and devices, plus Men in Black apparel, futuristic toys from across the galaxy, holographic jewellery, and an assortment of alien artifacts and souvenirs. And stinks, apparently. And weird bird smells. <laughs> <Yes>. Yep. <laughs> well, moving out of World Expo, we come to Springfield. The best land in the park. <laughs> there are two rides here. Um, as soon as we enter Springfield, uh, to our left, we will see the Simpsons ride. And this is a motion-based simulator, and unlike many rides in Universal Studios Florida, it is not 3D. Uh, this is the ride that took over the old Back to the Future attraction. <laughs> Sorry, Darren. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so if you had ridden that previously you have a pretty good idea of what this is uh guests must be at least 40 inches to ride and guests between 40 inches and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion secondly we have king and kodos twirl and hurl it's an interactive family spinner ride in which guests must try to move their vehicles to trigger targets that will set off special effects there are no height restrictions on that ride no they're out bring your infant (laughs) <laughs> Bring your pets. The main <laughs> place for food in Springfield is Fast Food Boulevard. Oh, yes. At the entrance, you will find Moe's Tavern, and you can step inside there into their into Springfield's most recognizable tavern, where you can enjoy a real Duff beer, locally brewed exclusively for Universal Orlando Resort. And a good job. Uh, you can also too. try out the Love Tester machine in the corner. But forget about the jukebox. It's broken as always. <laughs> Fast Food Boulevard also has a food court style eatery and it contains Krusty Burger for a Krusty certified meat sandwich. Mm. Including the legendary Krusty Burger, the Clogger Burger, the Ribwich, Sideshow Bob's Foot Long, or a Heat Lamp Dog. Then wash it all down with an authentic Buzz Cola. The Frying Dutchman, you can eat for a basket of shrimp. The basket of calamari, the basket of bait, which is fried fish, shrimp, and calamari, battered and plattered fish, or the clam chowder. <laughs> Cletus Chicken Sack also serves the chicken and waffle sandwich, the double batter chicken platter, chicken arms, chicken thumbs, <laughs> and more. 
<laughs> Luigi's Pizza. Choose from cheese pizza, the vegetarian pizza, or the meat likers pizza. <laughs> And Lisa's Tea House of Horror for healthy and delicious prepackaged items. They are available here. They're not interested in freshly preparing no. your healthy no. items. No. Eat bad or get out. <laughs> um, but if you want to eat these, you can <laughs> let me rephrase that. If you are interested in <laughs> healthy options, you can find salads, veggie sandwiches, turkey wraps, hummus, fruit plates, fruit cups, and assorted yogurts. I can actually say the turkey wraps are really good. They're good. There you go. Yeah. Outside, you will find Bumblebee Man's taco truck, mm -hmm. Icarumbe. The star of Channel Ocho's longest-running variety show brings a muy bueno taste of Mexican street food to the streets of Springfield. There's also a Lard Lad Donuts right next door where you'll find giant donuts, ice cream, and the brain-freezing donut sundae. And finally, I know some of y'all's favorite areas in the oh, park. Yes. <laughs> is the Duff Brewery. You can sit mm -hmm. by the waterside or at the bar and sample three different Duff beers, squishies, and the most famous drink, the Flaming Mo. And the Quickie Mart in Springfield is your place to stock up on Simpsons-themed toys, t-shirts, books, souvenirs, and more. And a little tip here, if you want a large lad donut and there's a huge line, go to the, uh, the Quickie Mart because they always have them there made fresh that day uh, and there's usually not a line. Good tip. And if you're a big Simpsons fan like myself, there's a lot of really funny Simpsons merchandise you can get in the Quickie Mart as well, like a Bort magnet. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love stuff like that. So next up is Woody Woodpecker's Kid Zone. Now it's Universal Studios Florida's area dedicated to kids and families. Now here you'll find many attractions for smaller kids. Woody Woodpecker's Nuthouse Coaster is a family roller coaster where guests must be at least 36 inches to ride and guests between 36 and 48 inches must be accompanied by a supervising companion. Now the E.T. Adventure is one of Universal Studio Florida's opening day attractions and it's a dark ride in which you board bicycles, yes real bicycles, mm. as you join E.T. to journey back to save his home planet. Um, kids or adults may be freaked out by this. I speak from experience. <laughs> so if you wish to go on this ride guests must be, between, must be at least 34 inches and guests between 34 and 48 inches again must be accompanied by a supervising companion now in the kids zone there are two family shows there are animal actors on location which is a theatre style show in which you see how handlers showcase um, how the filmmakers use animals in movies and then there's a day in the park with Barney <laughs> where you can join the big purple dinosaur in a sing-along, clap-along live show. And be sure to go in Barney's backyard for an indoor, interactive play area for smaller kids. Mm -hmm. Let me just yes. get it out. If you want more information, please refer to episode 23. <laughs> or not. <laughs> this area also contains two huge children's play areas, which are Fivel's Playground, where kids can run, jump, climb, bounce, fall over, <laughs> and everything through this outdoor playground, this, uh, which is filled with oversized, oversized props from the films An American Tale and Five Will Goes West, which I haven't seen either. No. And then the other play area is Curious George Goes to Town, and it does look really, really cute, actually. Uh, curious mm -hmm. little ones can explore the colourful animal show tent with plenty of play activities for toddlers. Enter the town's cartoonish buildings and grab a pump valve Pause or lever to spray or drench your friends with water and head to the man in the big yellow hat's ball factory where you can throw, blast and launch thousands of soft foam balls at family and friends and anyone else within reach. Kids Zone Dining can be found at the quick service Kids Zone Pizza Company for pizza, chicken fingers, chef salad and fruit cups. And if you want to shop here, you need to go to the not-to-be-missed Spongebob store pants for all of your bikini bottom goodies. Mm -hmm. Which is an awesome shop. Even if you just go in, again, lots of gags and visuals on the walls. Great. Oh, yeah. Look, look for price tags. That's all we'll say. <laughs> yes. Uh, bikini bottom goodies is a little bit of a strange phrase, though. It is, actually. Yeah. Does this still have the um, Spongebob meet and greet? Yes. There you go. Yeah. Yes. Um, One of you... the, the most fun meet and greets in the yes. park, I'll dare say. Mm -hmm. yes absolutely if you want E.T. merch you can go to E.T.'s toy closet and the Barney store has all of your Barney stuff yeah and I will say really quickly in between um, Kid Zone and the Simpsons area yes. you will find possibly the most iconic 
uh, amazing feature in Universal Studios, and that is a screen used DeLorean and the time train from Back to the Future. Yes. Yes, I forgot so to make put sure you in. go there. And very often, uh, Doc Brown will be there doing photo ops and driving around his uh, time machine bicycle, which is a newer invention <laughs> you have to check out. Yes, it's very cool. Yep. Um, and then moving on to the final area of Universal Studios, Florida, we enter Hollywood. And we have two attractions here. Entering from Kid Zone, we hit Universal Horror Makeup Show first. A comedic, more adult stage show themed around horror movie effects that could be too much for smaller children. Make sure to take a good look around the foyer as it houses props from some of Universal's most famous movies. And the second attraction is Terminator 2 3D. Um, it's uh, in a theater. It's in, excuse me, it's an in-theater show <laughs> featuring live actors, animatronics, 3D film, pyrotechnics, and more in theater effects. Could be too intense for, for more sensitive guests. This attraction takes place after the events of Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Uh, dining in Hollywood can be found at Cafe La Bamba for burritos, steak, pastries, and coffee. Uh, guests can also book the Superstar Character Breakfast here on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and select Mondays. Now, Mel's Drive-In has burgers and fries, uh, chicken sandwiches, chicken fingers, onion rings, root beer floats, and frosty milkshakes in a 50s-style setting. Schwab's Pharmacy is an old-school soda fountain in which guests can purchase ice cream sundaes, milkshakes, malts, banana splits, and ice cream floats. And finally, the Beverly Hills Boulangerie <laughs> for breakfast croissants, sandwiches, soups, salads, freshly baked pastries, and cheesecake. Uh, shopping can be found in Cyber Image for all your Terminator merch, as well as uh, lots of other pop culture and geek merchandise. Um, the Betty Boop store for all your Betty Boop themed collectibles, jewelry, toys, gifts, and apparel. The Hello Kitty shop in which you can purchase everything Hello Kitty and Sanrio, as well as meet Hello Kitty herself. And then finally, we come to the Brown Derby hat shop for headwear of all types. This is the place to go when you're waiting for the Mardi Gras parade to come nice. through. Just go in and try on all the hats. It's fun. Contract lice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> all, <laughs> all That's my worry. Visors, <laughs> character and novelty, novelty hats and wigs, Universal Studios logo caps, and other stylish lids. And also, we have another store there. Oh, oh. I took over the magic shop, and that's the prop shop. Yes. Williams of Hollywood. I've actually just realized I've missed out another store in New York as well. And no one picked and, up on it. Oh, oh my God. I, I know. I know. Yeah, these are the these are the two best shops in the park too, which is hilarious. Yeah, but the Film Vault has a lot of cool retro merchandise from like Ghostbusters and Back to the Future and Jaws and uh, uh, Universal Monsters. And oh gosh, there's, there's so many cool things there. It's it's one of the, the coolest shops in the park for sure. And the uh, the Williams of Hollywood prop shop has uh, it features uh, recreations of of antique looking things, and then also the the really cool thing is they feature actual props from Universal. Right now, if they haven't sold it yet, they they have the flying cow. They have Elsie from the show uh, from Twister, still just hanging out waiting to be bought. So, awesome, yeah, cool. definitely check out all those. Universal Studios Florida also offers a daily parade and a nighttime show. The Superstar Parade takes place in the park either mid-afternoon or early evening and features EB from Hop, Gru, the girls and minions from Despicable Me, Dora and Diego, and SpongeBob SquarePants. But make sure to check your park map for specific times uh, and the parade route. Universal Studios Florida's Universal Cinematic Spectacular is the nighttime extravaganza, which is on the park's lagoon. It features water screens and fireworks, and the show usually takes place around park close. So once again, please check your park map for exact times, and do make sure, because on some uh, some times of year, they do not do the show either. So mm -hmm. keep an eye out. Yep, great yeah. point. Now finishing up our tour of Universal Orlando Resort, we look at the Lowe's operated on-site hotels. They're split into three categories, which are Prime Value, Preferred, and Premier. The hotel privileges include early park admission to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, resort-wide charging privileges with your room key, complimentary delivery of merchandise purchased throughout the resort to your hotel, and complimentary scheduled transportation to nearby Wet n' Wild Water Park, SeaWorld and Aquatica. Cabana Bay Beach Resort is the only prime value hotel and it has a retro theme based around your typical old school road trip vacations. Cabana Bay currently has 1,800 rooms of which 900 are family suites and 900 are stand standard rooms. That's a lot of rooms. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the resort features the 10-lane bowling alley, Galaxy Bowl, which is $15 plus a $4 shoe rental for one hour of bowling for one to three people or one and a half hours for four to eight people. Uh, there are two pools, one with a water slide and the other features a lazy river. The hotel also features the Jack LaLanne Physical Fitness Studio as well as a Universal Store and an arcade. The Bayliner Diner Food Court is a 600-seat grab-and-go center for burgers and milkshakes, pizza and pasta, a bakery, sandwiches, and more. It's huge. Uh, Galaxy Bowl has a limited has a limited seating, full-service dining option featuring appetizers, sandwiches, burgers, pizza, and hot dogs. There is also an on-site Starbucks, and the pool bars offer signature frozen drinks and smoothies. We will discuss this more later, but Cabana Bay does not offer express passes. Guests can get to and from the parks and city walk by shuttle, bus, or by the walkway that takes appro- approximately 15 minutes. Sapphire Falls is the newest on-site hotel. Uh, it is Caribbean-themed and is a preferred hotel. It features a 1,000 rooms, of which 83 are suites. Rooms offer free Wi-Fi for up to four devices, and pets are permitted for a $50 a night fee. No more than two pets per room. Who do you think they are? Ace Ventura. <laughs> Well, well, no. Which of the rest Some, do we take? You know, Hunter only travels with his seventeen cats. <laughs> yeah. Very lonely. I have two, and they're very <laughs> precious. And the do not like Sinbad. We talked about this. Well, that's good, but you can take so both I've of them. So I've got to pay the fifty dollar a night fee, so they're not terrified and attack the raptors and anyone around me. Yes. <laughs> Sapphire Falls has one sixteen thousand square foot pool. And it has also a hot tub, a kids' water play area, and a slide. It is the largest pool on property. Mm-hmm. It has the Kalina Health and Fitness Center, which is complimentary. It also has a game room and the Universal Store. Dining options include the Amatista Cookhouse, featuring Caribbean cuisine, the Drum Club Canteen for a tapas-style menu, New Dutch Trading Company is a grab-and-go option. And finally, Strong Water and Tavern, which features rum and a ceviche bar. Guests can use the complimentary water taxis or take the lovely walk to City Walk. Next up, the Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort is the second of Universal's preferred hotels and is the first on-site hotel that gives guests complimentary unlimited express on the day of check-in and the day of check-out and all days in between. The resort is themed after the South Pacific and features 1,000 rooms, eight Jurassic Park-themed kid suites, 40 suites, and 952 standard rooms. That's I've read that wrong. So it's 1,000 rooms, eight of which are Jurassic Park-themed kid suites, 40 are just normal suites, and the rest are standard rooms. The Royal Pacific Resort features one pool, two hot tubs, an interactive water play area for kids, a beach volleyball court, and private cabanas to rent. Uh, on select nights, the dive-in movie will be screened at the pool, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Dining options consist of the Island's Dining Room, which offers traditional breakfast with a Polynesian twist and Pan-Asian cuisine for dinner. Emerald's Chop Chop for Emerald's take on Asian Polynesian cuisine. Uh, the Orchid Court Lounge and Sushi Bar serve sushi and South Seas martinis. The Bula Bar and Grill is a poolside eatery. Jake's American Bar for lunch and dinner serves burgers, chicken, fish, and more. And the Royal Pacific Resort also hosts the, here we go, the Wantilan Luau, uh, a weekly Hawaiian dinner show featuring an all-you-can-eat buffet of Polynesian specialties, live Hawaiian music, and traditional hula dancing. Uh, And a character breakfast is also held at the resort on certain days. Now, the Hard Rock Hotel is the first premier hotel at Universal Orlando and also features complimentary unlimited express passes. Now, it has 650 rooms, 12 of which are all-American music-themed kids suites. There are 489 standard rooms, 86 club-level standard rooms, 42 deluxe rooms and 21 other suites. It's a good mix, actually. The Hard Rock Hotel has one pool, but what a pool. It features a 260-foot water slide. Wow. Wow. It's guitar-shaped as well, I do believe. Thank you for taking that away from me. Sorry. They also have music that plays under the water in the guitar-shaped pool. Thank you. (laughs) Guests can also take part in diving movies here too on select nights. Now, there are two main dining options at the Hard Rock Hotel. The kitchen serves a character breakfast as well as lunch and dinner. And they also offer the famous Kitchen Challenge. Take it on, (laughs) if you dare. Was it made famous by us? Maybe. We've tried it twice and failed. Miserably. But it's a lot of fun trying. (laughs) 
And there is also the Palm, which is a famed New York steakhouse, which is open for dinner only. But you can also go to Emac and Bolio's Marketplace for ice cream, sorbets and frozen yoghurt. And there's also the Velvet Bar for a chilled martini or a cocktail or five and appetisers. And the Beach Club is a poolside bar for Carbo Wabo cocktails, light snacks and refreshing drinks. The hotel features a complimentary fitness centre, the rock shop for all your hard rock merchandise, and once a month, guests can purchase tickets for Velvet Sessions, which is a live concert in the hotel lobby featuring some great acts. We walked past that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. we It was Soul Asylum. It was. It was indeed. Uh, Guests (laughs) can get to City Walk and the parks by either walking the short walk through the Butterfly Garden, which is absolutely gorgeous, or you can get a water taxi, but the walk's much nicer. It is. It is. Yep, the final hotel and flagship, Portofino Bay, is themed to Portofino, Italy. The hotel features 750 rooms consisting of 242 standard rooms, 18 Despicable Me-themed kid suites, 94 club-level deluxe rooms, and 21 suites. It features three pools. The beach pool has a sandy beach and water slide and features dive-in movies as well. The villa pool has upgraded amenities for a relaxing couple of hours uh, or an afternoon. And the hillside pool is a quiet pool offering more privacy. The problem with the hillside pool is the water keeps falling out. (laughs) They're working on it. Your dining options here are Mama Della's restaurant. Oh, yeah, I'm not even going to try. Mama Della's restaurant (laughs) from authentic Italian cuisine, much like my accent. Biche Restaurante is an exquisite culinary voyage. Uh, The Trattoria del Porto. I think I got that one right. Mm-hmm. It offers breakfast and dinner featuring burgers, sandwiches, and Italian fare. Sal's Market Deli, thank you, <laughs> has brick oven pizzas, antipasto, and more. And the Thirsty Fish is a harborside Italian wine bar. That sounds great. Uh, bar American has specialty drinks and Italy's treasured grappas. Uh, the Splendido Bar and Grill is a poolside eatery. And the hotel features the Mandara Spa and Complimentary Fitness Center. The spa offers guests customized and personalized treatments to fit, to fit their needs. Uh, special events at Portofino Bay include Harbor Nights, a food, wine, and live music event, and uh, Musica della Note, right? Mm-hmm. Music of the Night showcases a unique blend of classic opera, romantic, and festive music, along with Papra favorites. Guests can make their way to the parks via the water taxis or the approximately one-mile garden walkway. So I think you're going to go the water taxi on that one. Yeah. A mile's not far. Well, especially after the park, a mile feels like 20 miles. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially if you've been keeping up with the Malabies. <laughs> I suppose it depends on which direction you're walking in. Yeah, going to the parks will yeah. feel that bad. Coming home will be horrendous. Like 10 miles. Very much so. Universal Orlando Resort also hosts many seasonal events as well. Uh, so for all you Harry Potter fans, January has a celebration of Harry Potter in which guests can see props from the movies and even see cast members and participate in live panels and all sorts of fun stuff. In February, March, and April, Universal's Mardi Gras celebrations come to Universal Studios Florida, which has themed food, parades, and some big-name bands. Uh, It's a great event. It's one of our favorites. And uh, definitely check out Mardi Gras. One day. One day. Universal Orlando's Christian Rock Festival, Rock the Universe, comes to the resort in September. Also, September and October, see the country's leading Halloween event take over Universal Studios Florida, which is Halloween Horror Nights. It's a must event for any scare attraction fan, as the park is fully transformed into the things from your nightmares. Finally, throughout December, uh, we see the holidays take over the resort with the Macy's Parade and performances by Mannheim Steamroller at Universal Studios Florida. And the Grinch comes to town for Grinchments at Islands of Adventure. Please check UniversalOrlando.com for more detail on these events. So this is our overview of the resort, and hopefully it will give you the info you need to be able to enjoy everything that Universal Orlando has to offer. Of course, for more in-depth information, discussion, and chat, go back into our archive and continue to listen to the podcast. And of course, enjoy your next visit to Universal Orlando Resort. That's it for another unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Make sure you never miss a show by subscribing on iTunes, and while you're there, please leave us a rating and a review. Listen to us on Stitcher, Google Play, and all your podcast apps. Email us with any questions or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com, or even better, record your message at speakpipe.com slash uuopodcast. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Pinterest, keyword uuopodcast. 
Check out our blog for even more content at uuopodcast.com. And finally, our sponsors, Fairy Godmother Travel, are here to help with all your universal vacation needs. So check them out today at fairygodmothertravel.com. Well, that's a wrap. See you next week.